Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to our best vacuum for tile floors video. People have been asking us for years to do a video about which vacuum cleaner is the best for tile floors, but quite frankly, I didn't really know the answer to that question. But this week, I decided to try to figure it out, so I did all kinds of tests on all kinds of different tile floors, and in this video, I'll go over what I found out. So links in the description, and let's get started. When people ask the question, what vacuum is the best for tile floors, I think what they're really asking is either what vacuum is the safest to use on tile surfaces so as not to scratch them, or what vacuum is the best for picking up debris on tile floors, especially debris that's between the tiles in the grout where it's harder to pick up. So those are the two questions I tried to answer in this video. The first thing to know is that not all tile floors are the same in terms of their chances of being scratched. According to Bob Vila and my Home Depot floor department guy, the tiles most likely to be scratched are natural stone tiles, like tiles that are actually rocks, like slate. But it's rare that people have this type of tile in their home. Then you have the porcelain tiles that have a really shiny, polished glaze on them. These are probably the next most scratchable, but they're a lot less likely to be scratched than the natural stone. And then you have the most common type, which is a ceramic glazed tile that doesn't really have a shine or polish to it. This kind is really difficult to scratch. The kind that I bought, I literally tried to scratch it as hard as I could with metal and couldn't seem to leave a single mark. But what about vacuum brush rollers that spin really fast? Do they leave marks on on tile floors. To find out, I took some vacuums with very aggressive brush rollers, like for example my Ricard 40 series, which has a big brush roll motor and uncommonly stiff bristles. It's the kind of brush roller that gave rise to the name Beater Bar. I took that vacuum as well as some others that I know to have particularly aggressive rollers and used them on their lowest height setting in order to make maximum contact with the tile. It should be noted that many of these vacuums that can be used for both hard floors and carpets have a brush roll shutoff switch, which of course I did not use in this test. Basically, I'm doing everything you would not want to do if you were worried about scratching your floors. In these tests, I found that even on natural stone tile, I could not make a scratch with any of these vacuums, except with the Sanitaire Tradition, and that was only because on its lowest setting, the metal on the base plate scratched the natural floor type, but that vacuum is explicitly not supposed to be used on hard floors anyway, and certainly not on its lowest setting, so it wasn't really fair. There was one anomaly in the scratch tests with the Shark LA502 Rotator, one of Shark's cheaper duo clean designs. I found that on the natural stone, it did leave a mark if I kept it in the same spot for a while. I'm not sure I would call it a scratch, but it definitely was a mark. It did not do this on the other tiles, just the natural stone one, and all of the other Shark duo cleans I tested on natural stone did not leave a mark. So I think it may have been a rare case with that particular model. But to sum up the results of the scratch test, I could not find a link between aggressive brush rollers and scratches on tile floors. So moving on to the pickup tests, where I used sand, as that is one of the heaviest and thus hardest to pick up debris types, and I tried this on a few different styles of tile floors. Here, I found that vacuums with brush roll on-off switches seem to require the extra suction power and airflow that you typically only find on more expensive vacuums. For example, the Dyson Ball Animal 3, a much more expensive vacuum of this type, did better than the Shark Navigator and Kenmore Featherlight, which are cheaper versions of this type. But those cheaper versions were eventually able to do the job, it just took a few more passes. The vacuums I tested with soft rollers did not seem to require as much power to do the job nearly perfectly. Probably because their design gives them a better seal on hard floors. This included dual brush vacuums like the Shark Duo Clean Stratos, as well as the new Hoover Emerge Pet. But the big winner here, I think, was the type that had interchangeable brushes. For example, they might come with a combo head that can be used for carpet or hard floors, as well as a soft roller head that can only be used for hard floors, but is really good for hard floors. This type is probably best represented by the Dyson cordless models like the V15, but lots of manufacturers like Tinko, and many others have similar designs. Interestingly, I found that the combo head on the Dyson V15 was not as good in the tile pickup test and required either being used on a higher power setting to pick it up cleanly or if the adjustable gates on the front were all the way closed. But when I used it with just the soft roller head, it was able to do the job perfectly even on its lowest power setting. If you're very concerned about scratching your hard floors and you don't want to take any chances, I would recommend a cordless vacuum with a separate soft brush like the Dyson V12 or 
V15 or a similar model as they are probably the best at pickup and the best at being super gentle. I'll make a big list explaining all my picks in the description. Be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.